Alright guys, hey guys, what's going on? Electric X here, and today we have returned to Scrap Mechanic, but we are in creative mode. What is this? Why are we not in survival? Why are we not continuing the series? Well, today, what I thought I would do is I would make a little video uh, doing uh, like a, a tutorial about how to make a couple different types of piston engine because uh, I've uh, I've seen a bunch of people doing this and I thought it might be kind of a nice break from the all the survival stuff so I'm today I'm going to be showing you a couple different methods uh, to how I make uh, piston engines uh, that can be helpful in survival and even in creative and they're really kind of just fun to make and they're really some of them are really cool to watch so I'm gonna show you two different methods um, that I have used to make piston engines today um one of them i definitely find easier than the other um so we are going to start off with that easier one so first what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to create a uh, a one by five beam out of blocks i'm just using tier three metal because i think it looks cool it uh, we don't you don't have to use tier three metal it doesn't matter obviously so uh, then you're going to want to place a bearing on one end of said beam and then you're going to want to place a T piece or a uh, or a cross piece it doesn't really matter um, I'm going to go for the T piece here uh, and you're just going to place it on that bearing and then you're going to place a bearing on the other side uh, and do the same with the T piece you're going to place another T piece on said uh, said T on said bearing sorry uh, and then you're going to take a piston and place it on the uh, 90 degree angle that, as you can see, I placed on top of this T-piece here. So you're going to want to do that, and then you're going to want to place a piston on top of that. And then you're going to want to place another 90 degree uh, curved piece uh, on, the side of, uh, on the other side of the piston, and you're going to want to connect it up to the T-piece like you saw me just do. Uh, so what this allows us to do is basically have uh, rotational motion on both sides of this beam because this piston does not have any collision with the beam so it allows for a um, for a little bit better of a um, of a system so that you don't have to put your wheels on the insides you can extend out your um, your engine and still have a frame on both sides um, so then you're just gonna want to go to the other side of this beam and just extend out some blocks um, It'll the, the the final amount of blocks that you're gonna want to extend by will be determined by what kind of piston engine you're making in this uh, In this example, I'm going to be making an inline three piston engine. So it's gonna be super easy super simple um, so what we're gonna want to do now is place another T piece on the end of a straight piece on the end of that first T piece like you saw me just do uh, and then on the end of that T piece uh, we're going to be placing a bearing like so and then we're basically gonna want to repeat this pattern two more times so straight piece on the end of that on that bearing and then T piece on the straight piece and then bearing straight piece and then T piece and then bearing and then uh, we are going to get our block back and we are going to extend it out so that it attaches to this bearing and then we are going to make sure it's welded to the rest of the uh, the engine so uh, now we have basically the frame done except for one more piece we're actually going to want to add some logic gates um, are we going to want to do it here? You know what? Let's do the logic gates here. Yeah. So we're going to add a logic gate there. And I'm just going to... This is a bit of an awkward way to do it. It's probably easier when you add in the beam. But I'm just going to do it this way because I already have my beam added in. Uh, I'm just going to get rid of these so I can just do the logic gates really easy real quick. So we're just going to place a logic gate and then there and then a logic gate and I'm gonna make sure that's attached it doesn't really matter where the logic gates are attached on the um, on the actual engine uh, just matters where um, it just matters that you have uh, as many logic gates as there are pistons and I just realized that I placed these T pieces incorrectly uh, you, I'm just gonna uh, fix that real quick you actually want to have them rotated towards the logic gates if they were rotated upwards that would be fine if we were doing a uh, vertical inline three but we are doing a horizontal inline three so it's really more like a flat three but it's not but not really and we'll just weld these up just like that perfect all right and now we are going to uh place where do i want it right here yeah and then we're going to place three 
curved pipe pieces facing in this direction on the other side because that's where I'm facing that side anyway and they're gonna be next to the logic gates um, and we're gonna have them placed so that when we place um, curved pieces on the T pieces um, facing the other direction that they will face in the same way and they will be all lined up and nice uh, and you're going to want this um, so that you can put your uh, your pistons in so uh, we're gonna add a bearing onto the end of each of these uh, 90 degree curved pieces here just like so just like that and then we are going to add curved pieces onto the bearings that are on the drive shaft just like that and now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to get our pistons and slap those on here just like this onto the end of those curved pieces and then instead of putting curved pieces here the way that this method works is we're going to actually need to have uh this piece here which is kind of the three-way um I, i'm not really sure what to call it um but it looks like this so uh, i'm sure you guys can probably determine which one that is that's uh, a little three-way one that isn't the t it's like bent so all right so we have those placed and now uh, you can and then on top of here you can use anything from like a block to a large pipe piece but i kind of when i'm in creative mode i like to use these fan blade caps for here because it's uh i, I think it looks kind of cool uh, and then on the ends of these logic gates, we are going to place a uh, 90 degree pipe facing upward like so. And then on top of those, we are going to be placing sensors. Just like that. There we go. Sensors. And then we're going to set these sensors to have a range of one. Just like this. And I think you guys might be able to see where this is going. Um, and uh, now we are going to place a controller here it doesn't really matter if it's here because the piston can just go through it because it doesn't have any collisions oh yeah and we got to connect it obviously uh, and we are going to connect the uh, controller to these two middle bearings and now since this is an inline three since this uh, engine has three pistons it's got three different sections um, what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go into the controller and we're going to want to divide 360 degrees by 3, which is going to be 120. Um, so we are going to rotate these bearings 120 degrees by default, just like that. And now when we spawn it in, notice how, um, notice how it rotates uh, to match this and the, uh, and the fan blade cap is triggering this sensor and you'll see why that's important in just a second if you haven't already figured it out now we are going to want to add a switch on this thing so that we'll be able to turn it on and off that's what the logic gates are for so uh, we're going to want to attach this switch to all the logic gates and the logic gates you can just place down because they're already on uh, the and mode which is what we need them on for them to function the way we want and we're going to connect all the sensors into the uh, logic gates like so so now you can see the sensors are connected into the logic gates and then we are going to connect the logic gates to their respective pistons so what this basically is doing is this is saying so when this spawns in this trigger uh, this sensor is activated by this fan blade because of the angle of the piston um, and it's and what the AND gate is saying is that it will only activate the piston unless the sensor is active and the switch is active so let me actually put this back on the lift for a second uh, so i can weld this to the ground i didn't really need to put it back on the lift but i did so we are going to just weld this to the ground real quick real quick and now none of the sensors are triggered why this seems to be only a problem a problem that i'm only having when it's welded to the ground and then i hmm interesting because when i when i spawn it in normally you can see that sensor is activated but when i weld it to the ground it does not seem like that is the case uh, let's try this again so we might have to give it a little bit of a jump start yeah so that should be that's a little weird so we're gonna have to jump start it which i it, it usually works just fine but uh we're gonna have to put that piston there 
uh, that pipe piece there just for a second so now as you can see we'll take this away and the switch is activated so now the piston engine is running look at that beautiful um so basically uh this helps out a lot with the timing this just basically senses when the piston is in the position uh where it needs to start extending um, in order to go around and this makes the this method makes the timing very easy I'm getting a lot of lag. I don't know why um, But this uh, this method makes it much more easy to uh, tune your piston engine because you don't have to Tune any timing plates or anything like that. It's basically a valve system uh, Where it just senses when the piston is um, Contracted so it tells it to extend at the right time so that is method one and before i move on to method two uh i'm going to uh first of all go to my lift and uh first of all i'm going to delete uh some of this actually but before we do that before i do that i want to show you this so this inline 10 engine is made using the same technique uh it's 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 the exact same thing except just copied down the line 10 times so it's super it's really simple because all you have to do to extend to make a bigger engine is just repeat the repeat the process and with this this thing is so satisfying to watch because it's just it's so smooth it's so satisfying so let me show you like look at how satisfying that is it's making a beautiful wave motion um like a spiral and uh this one can actually reverse directions uh, with a certain system that I implemented, uh, all I basically did was I, instead of having uh, the AND gates uh, connected to the um, the pistons, I added in some XOR gates or some XOR gates, um, so that um, so that whenever I press this other switch, it reverses the direction. Now, probably an easier way to do that would be to reverse the direction of the uh, controllers, um, but. Uh, but this is just, it, it's cool. It, it seems to be a little bit jerky right now. So, but if I put it nice and forward, like the way it's supposed to be going, beautiful. It's so smooth and it's just, it's so cool to watch. And then you get like this cool light effect with all the logic gates. All right. So that is method one to build a piston engine that I've used. Um, so the, uh, so method two is actually going to be pretty similar um, the only thing, uh, except we're going to be doing it with, instead of having like a valve-like timing system, we're going to be using a timing plate. So I'm actually going to get rid of uh, these sensors here, and as well as the fan blade caps. I'm not going to bother changing. Um, I'm not going to bother changing those uh, pieces, those pipe pieces there to um, the the curves but that's usually what you would use in this case uh, and I'm actually going to extend this by I think a block so I'm going to take my pipe piece just like that and um, and I'm realizing now that I'm doing this sort of wrong Sort of. Actually, eh, that's an easy fix. Okay, so we're also going to want to delete these pieces. So basically, you're going to want to do the same thing, except where I put these pieces in, you're actually going to want to put sensors. And you're going to want the sensors to be facing in the direction that you're going to be having a timing plate. So you're, they're all going to be facing in the same direction. Now, this one is going to have a range of 1. Uh, this one is going to have a range of 3. And this one here is going to have a range of five. So now these uh, will detect, they'll deploy, and then they are going to detect when they uh, are in a certain position um, to tell the piston to uh, extend or retract. So we're going to basically do the same thing that we did before. I'm just going to connect up this like so, and I don't have to add in the logic gates this time because they're already there. Um, so there we go, and now we are going to attach uh, these uh, sensors to their respective logic gates, like so. And now, there's a couple different ways that you can add in a timing plate. You can add in a, uh, a static timing plate if you wanted, uh, which I think that's what I'm going to do here. But another way to do it is that you could, uh, you could actually put a piston right here, and then have a uh, line of blocks kind of up. 
uh, and then one on the bottom as well uh, just like that and then you can push that in and then that's an easy way to do forward and reverse you can have it on uh, different switches but uh, we're not going to do that today we're just going to have your um, kind of classic timing plate so we're just going to build a basic shape here uh, for the timing plate to see how it works usually um, usually when you have it kind of going halfway around with one line missing on the bottom or the top I think that tends to work you might have to mess with it though a little bit to get the timing just perfect but I think oh I forgot to add bearings so I'm gonna fix that real quick 12 seconds later Alright, so those are attached. All I did was I uh, deleted the sensors and adding it, added in a bearing behind them. And we are also going to want to make sure that they are welded to the frame. Just like that. So you can kind of see how this is working. Uh, and now I'm just going to have to reconnect them to their respective logic gates. And then I think we'll, we should be able to detach it and weld it to the ground. And then it should work. We're going to take that and we're just going to slap it on here like so. Look at that. So now you can see that this, that a couple of the pistons are, uh, should be activated. That might cause a problem though. So I might have to get rid of that block there. So let's try turning it on. Let's see what happens. Oh, it, it appears to be working. So, so that seems to be working pretty well uh you can it, it's it looks like it's uh gets a little um glitchy so what you can do is um you can try getting rid of a block oh that was attached to that okay so now you can see it's going back and forth for apparently no reason great let me actually like you know finish let me add a little bit more onto here that seems to be working nicely as well might be a little bit glitchy and I yeah, like I said I'm lagging a little bit so that and I have no clue why um, but uh, but it, it appears to be working all right so yeah uh, the, and then you can also uh, do the same thing uh, that I did here on the other side if you wanted to have this kind of directly connected to the wheels um, you could add in some sort of gear system if you wanted to uh, using pipes uh, to connect it to your wheels but I think that is going to be all for uh, these couple little different tutorials. Uh, I personally prefer the first method um, because it makes um, it just makes it a little bit easier and it makes uh, it makes a little bit more sense in my opinion but uh, but uh, I guess that will be the end of today's video. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please be sure to leave a like and to subscribe and do everything you can to make this channel the most popular on YouTube. And be sure to check out my survival series if you haven't seen it already. Uh, I think today today uh, I just uploaded the most recent video that I uploaded um, before this one was uh, I finally beat the warehouse and I got the loot. Uh, well, I didn't beat it. I don't think I, I I'm not gonna count it as beating it because I didn't get the I didn't get all the tape bots but I I got up to the roof and I got the uh, loot boxes and stuff and I got the uh, the pineapple and broccoli seeds so uh, so yeah go check that out if you uh, if you guys want to see some of the survival um, and there will be definitely more survival to come in the future and I might uh, I might have some uh, some piston some more piston powered creations uh, I might have to bring back the good old piston car, but I think that'll do it for today. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.